evening, everyone, and welcome to Columbus Grove High School, where tonight, under beautiful skies, the Columbus Grove Invitational Track and Field event takes place. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Nate Garlock and our entire WSN crew. And Nate, <laughs> it's April 14th. It's 80 degrees, and I, I don't expect this weather. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing that you can count on when it comes to track and weather. It's always going to be unexpected. You never know if you're going to end up in a snowstorm in mid-April at track, or you're going to have to come out of here with a third-degree sunburn. Well, we got a good one tonight. Let's take a look at our field tonight. Our first event, the girls 100 meter hurdles. They are going to line up as follows in lane one, Emma Wells from Macomb. Lane two, Aliyah Manin from Bodkins. London Reese from Anna's in lane three. Lane four, Liv Lindemann from Jefferson. In lane five, Jessa Burgay of Ottoville. And in lane six, Chelsea Mickledowney from Anna. So they call the girls to the blocks, and we are just about underway here. Top time in this is London Reese from Anna at 15.6. Pretty good start out of the gate by Liv Lindemann. There in the middle of the track. She's out to that quick lead, Danny. She is taking over this race and a great job by Liv Lindemann. We were used to seeing her on the basketball court, but she's doing it on the track as well. So she's going to win the girls 100 meter hurdles. Up next on the track, the boys 110 meter hurdles. Finals of this event, 110 meter hurdles. And Nate, let's take a look at the field for this event. They are going to line up as followed. Lane one, Cody Ricker of Lincoln View with a seed time of 17.2. Peter Vance of McComb is in lane two at 16.65. Jackson Brown from Ada, 16.4. In lane four, Garrett Trentman of Ottoville, 16.4 seed time as well. Lane five, Leighton Blankenmeyer from Columbus Grove with a 16.6 seed time. And in lane six, Dalton Wick of Anna with a 17.07 seed time. Nate, you and I both coach track, and we know how important it is to get that lead leg and that trail leg. Talk a little bit about it's not always the fastest person that gets down the track. It's the guy that gets over the hurdles the best. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's all about that approach. You know, you you've, if you're around track at all and you spend any time with it, you know, you, you hear three-step. Three-step is, is yes, the exactly. ideal. You want to take three steps, you put your lead leg down, one, two, three, back over, lead leg down, one, two, three, back over. If you can get that really them, you can keep that space close from the top of the hurdle, and you can go through, and you can attack without losing that speed. Those are the ones you see. You, you take the hurdles away, straight on. Right. They may not be the <laughs> exactly. fastest guys, but exactly. when you get that technique going, that's what you see those guys who are really excelling in this. I had a uh, young girl at, a, at the school that I work at, and she was talking to me the other day about uh, she's starting out hurdling, and she said, am I going to fall down? And I said, you're going to fall down a lot when you do this. So <laughs> we are ready and getting started here as they have called them to the blocks. They are underway. Good start there for Garrett Trentman from Ottaville. He's being pressed by Jackson Brown from Ada on the right side. You see a great race up there up front. As, and that is going to be taken by lane number three. Jackson Brown of Ada is going to bring home the victory. Just edging that one out. You saw him. He was he was in third position there, coming about uh, about four hurdles to go, and he did a great job of making up the field there. So, great job by Jackson Brown, winning the boys' 110 meter hurdles. Up next on the track, the girls' 100 meter dash. Uh, I, look, Nate, I say this every year when I commentate track and field. This is my favorite event on the track, this and the 200 meter dash. And this to me, is, it's kind of like the 50 meter swim, you know, it's just pure speed. It's just get out of the blocks and go. And I absolutely love that about it. You get to see a lot of athleticism and you get to see a lot of great races. And absolutely. I mean, it, a lot goes into this race. People think that, you know, it, you know, with the, it comes to just running 100 meters down, but there's so much more to it. It's so much fun when you, when you can get down to it. And, we got uh, right now five girls on the track ready to go. They're going to line up as followed in lane one, Brent Fortman of Columbus Grove. Have a scratch in lane two, London Reese. As you mentioned, Danny, looked like she came up lame in the hurdles, and she is scratched out of this race. In lane three is Alex Kesson of St. John's. In lane four, Kirsten Jackson of St. John's. Liv Lindemann's in lane five from Delphus Jefferson, and Audra Myers of Riverdale in lane six. Kesson in the lead early here. She's being pushed by Liv Lindemann. Kesson really doing a nice job of holding that lead, and she's going to win the girls' 100-meter dash, topping Liv Lindemann by just a few steps. Yeah, Kesson beat her out of the 
blocks that time and held on to that lead. Quick turnaround for Liv Lindemann, who we just saw win the 100-meter hurdles not that long ago, and that may have came into a little bit of play here early in the season. Yeah, Nate, let's talk about that first step out of the block. So we don't talk a lot about that in track and field, and it's so important to get a good start coming out of the blocks. I know as a coach, that's what we worked on uh, just about every day was coming out of the blocks. Yeah, you, you, your first, and it's even more than just that first step because it's that first as you kind of get out of that block, it's your first as you, that gradual rise as you come up. You don't want to stand st straight up. You want to get your body going in the right direction, feet placement, all that stuff. There, there's actually a lot to it that a lot there of people is. don't realize <laughs> when it's like, oh, you just run fast, and th these kids are just so much more talented. We used to line that. kids up in the blocks, Nate, and we would put them side by side, and I would tell one kid, I want you to stand, when I, when I fire the gun, I want you to stand straight up, and the other guy, I want you to do what we've taught you to do. And the amazing part was you would see that first step of the guy coming out of the blocks as opposed to the guy standing straight up, and we would just, look, you're already out. You're already, you're already getting beat out of the blocks. Absolutely. Boys, 100-meter dash up on the track next. A special thank you to all our underwriting sponsors. Spencer Athletic Boosters, Charles River, Tabler's drive Through, Macomb Family Dental, Van Crest of Delphus, The Creamery, and Quest Federal Cream, excuse me, Federal Credit Union sponsoring tonight's track meet. So the boys' 100-meter dash is up next, Nate. Let's take a look at this field. Some pretty impressive times coming into the seed. They are going to line up as follow. Lead one, Xavier Meckledowney of Anna with an 11.5 seed. Cole Horston of Delphus Jefferson also with an 11.5 seed time. Top seed coming in is in lane three, Justin Richards of Anna with an 11.16. From Macomb in lane four, Braxton Althauser. In lane five, Michael Turnwald of Ottoville. He has a seat time of 11.4. And in lane six, Boston Reynolds of Adelphus Jefferson with an 11.5 seat time. Nate, these are some really good times. And typically, I would say, in April 14th, you know, early in the year, you don't see these kind of times. But the weather's so nice and it's so warm. These kids are getting loose and they're really knocking these times out of the park. Yeah, absolutely. You I mean, as a coach, you'd have to be ecstatic to have these kind of times <laughs> right. already. Um, especially when you're looking at, uh, you know, Division three, which all these schools will be, and you start looking at the times. And, you know, coaches always kind of keep an eye on, you know, what may be happening in the district regionals and even down in Columbus and down at the state meet. And, you know, if you're running an 11-1 now, you know, Justin Richards is thinking, you know, much bigger well, meet at the end of the season. And you're just hoping to be able to continue to improve on that. You and I have uh, coached track and field for years, and you – are just like me. You were always peeking. You were always looking different regions of who's, you know, how your kids stack Absolutely. up. Oh, <laughs> even even not coaching now, I'm still doing still that. Do we, we got a couple records out there that I keep an eye still on. Do the same thing. That's right. So the boys' 100 meter dash is up next. They have been called to the blocks, and they are in the set position. Great start in lane three. Justin Richards, man, you are correct as he's pulling away. He is being pressed on the outside. But Justin Richards, it looks like from Anna, is going to edge out the rest of the field. Braxton Althauser was right there on his shoulder trying to push him and catch him down. But we mentioned it in the girls and, you know, a couple of times even in the back in the hurdle races how important that start is. And you saw uh, Justin Richards just, he just shot out of those blocks, had great form, and that really what's propelled him to that victory. We're going to step aside. We're going to take our first break. When we come back, we'll have the girls 4x200 meter relay, our first relay event of the night. We'll be watching high school track and field right here on WOSN. Welcome back here to Columbus Grove High School. Next on the track, the girls 4x200 meter relay. And Nate, this is another one of those races. Not always the fastest team wins the race. It's the team that gets the baton around the track the fastest. Yeah, and more specifically inside that zone, who can get in and out the smoothest and the fastest usually have a, a great advantage when it comes to this race. You know, you mentioned, you know, those 100 meter dashes were your favorite. These relays, 4x2, 4x1 a little bit later, these relays are, are my fastest or my favorite to watch. So the four by two, each girl, four on a team, will run a 200-meter dash, and not necessarily 200 meters, depending on where you put the relay guy in the zone. And nope, there is a lot of um, strategy, strategy that right, comes right. into play about where you want to put them, how do you adjust steps. You can lengthen some if you have a stronger runner, runner running a certain uh, leg compared to another one. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, it's all about whatever you got to do to get around the track the fastest. Let's take a look at the teams participating in the girls' 4x200-meter finals. In the lane one. 
one is Riverdale, lane two, Jefferson, lane three, Anna, lane four, St. John's, lane five, Columbus Grove, and in lane six, Bobcats. This is interesting, Nate. Jefferson is led by Liv Lindemann, and we have saw her twice tonight, already in the 100-meter dash and the 100-meter hurdles. Yeah, a little bit of a surprise for that strategy. You would have thought maybe Liv would, might right. be the anchor oh, yes. on that relay. Instead, their anchor is going to be a freshman, Nakaya Kimmett. Um, you know, you, you don't see <laughs> no a lot. You don't see yeah. you don't see a lot of freshman anchoring yeah. uh, relays as well. But you can see that this squad is out for Jefferson. Looks like they had the first handoff there on the inside, and they had a little trouble on that second exchange. But uh, here comes Jefferson. This is Madison Burris as she picks up the lead here, and. Uh, you know, speaking of the freshman anchors, they must have a lot of confidence in the young lady to give her that position so early in the season. And that is Grove in the first position. I'm sorry, I, I had assumed that was Jefferson. That is Grove in the first position. And you mentioned a freshman, Columbus Grove, one senior, Brent Fortman. She was the lead runner for this relay. The other three are all freshmen. Kendall Palti, Jade uh, Raider Rotor, I believe we'll get yes. that up. And then uh, Allison Thompson. So a 153 seat time for them as they are out in front. But here comes Anna. Look at Anna come on the back side as they are taking the lead from the Grove Bulldogs. So we're going to have a fantastic finish here in the girls 400 meter, four by 200 meter relay. Great exchange there on that third one for Anna. And that really catapults them into a lead. Grove going to try to make up that distance with Anna on the inside on the turn as they come in and get that stagger erased. Anna's going to have a nice lead on the straightaway. I was just going to say too, Nate, that inside lane is a big help when you're running in that last leg there. Here comes Anna down the home stretch as they are holding off the Grove Bulldogs. And Anna Rockets will win the girls 4x200 meter relay, followed up by Columbus Grove followed up by, looks like, Bodkins in the third position. So Columbus Grove gets the runner-up spot on their home track here in their Invitational as they are edged out. Up next on the track, the boys' 4 by 200 meter run. And what's interesting about this race, Nate, is you look at the meet record of 133.6 by Anna in 2014, and you look at Columbus Grove's seed time coming in at 133. So we could see a possible record tonight. Or excuse me, Anna as a po I said Columbus Grove. <laughs> Anna with a 133. So with the temperatures as warm as they are, we could see a possible record broke tonight. Oh, absolutely. This is perfect kind of weather to kind of go after those times, kinds of times and try to drop them a little bit and they really don't even have to drop time they just got to go out there and run their seed time and they could set a new record here tonight let's take a look at each team that's participating in the boys four by 200 meter relay in lane one we're going to have mccomb they're going to be made up of andrew swisher landon banky peter vance and peyton baldridge lane two columbus grove Luke, lucas Mertz, trenton daniels aiden blankenmeyer trenton uh, barraza in lane three is anna grant carity ben mcdermott Xavier Meckledowney and Justin Richards. For Delphus Jefferson in lane four, they have Lucas Grothaus, Trent Teeman, Cole Horston, and Boston Reynolds. Lane five, Lincoln View, Cody Kittle, Tenzi Coyle, Cordan Thomas, and Cohen Cox. And in lane six, Michael Turnwald, Quentin Snipke, Garrett Trentman, and Alex Lease. So what's interesting about this field, Nate, is you look at the Columbus Grove team, Trenton Barraza, the all-state running back for the Bulldogs, is out there in the anchor position for the 4 by 2 so it's going to be fun to watch him try to bring home a victory for the Dogs. Well, that's one of the things about, about track and, you know, it being a spring sport. There's so many names, that, especially for WOSN and all the, yes, all the sports yes, that right, we've been right. able to broadcast and been fortunate to be oh, at, so many names that just repeat. And, I, and I'm sure our viewers know this. When you have a strong football program, you always seem to have a strong track program, and a lot of the athletes come out in the spring and participate in track and field. Set. Uh, they're going to bring him out of the blocks. Uh, occasionally, <laughs> we get a, uh, a gun that won't start or won't discharge, and I think that's what's happened here. Yeah, so there's going to be a chance for everybody to kind of take a breath and, and reset. We didn't have a false start, but sometimes, like you mentioned, you know, the starting gun just had you know, misfired, something like that, or there's a warning they wanted to, to issue to a runner. So they'll call him back to the blocks again. On your mark. The call will be made from the booth here. There's a set position. 
And they are underway in the boys' 4 by 200 meter relay. It'll be interesting to see this first exchange here and see who gets a smooth exchange, see who stumbles a little bit. It's early in the year, and this is the type of, they're the time of year when you have a lot of problems with exchanges because you just haven't had enough good weather to work it out on the track. And you can see on our broadcast there, Ottoville out in front, out there in lane six. But with that stagger, sometimes it can be a little misleading as who's, exactly. uh, who's out in front. Anna looked like uh, their handoff was about the same time, but Ottoville not run, now running a good race. Garrett Trentman there in the two spot, holding on to that lead. But you see Anna there in the middle of the track trying to make up time. And you see, like you said, here comes Anna looking to take into second place from Lincoln View, and they are doing a great job. Let's see the handoff here. Looks smooth for everybody. Anna got a great handoff, and you see them on the inside. And you can tell right there that handoff, how good it was. Catapulted them out in front, but there was also a very good handoff uh, in lane number two, Columbus Grove. Trenton Daniels there on that third leg trying to hold on to second place, but on the inside, here comes McComb. And Justin Richards for Anna is going to bring it home in the anchor position. And here comes Trenton Barraza for the Dogs. He's got the inside position. Let's see if he can make up that ground for the Bulldogs. Columbus Grove trying to stay close, seeing if they can't make a run at this once they come into the straightaway. But Anna looks like they're going to come away comfortably. Should have a nice race there for second as Columbus Grove and McComb are going to find out for the two spot. Look at McComb on the inside, and it looks like McComb edges Columbus Grove. And we'll have to check. That's a photo finish, Nate. <laughs> yeah, it looked like McComb did a nice job on that inside and just edged out Columbus Grove at the line. And, you know, that's why, you know, you'll hear coaches that can frustrate them sometimes. They hate to lose, but they hate losing at the line even more. Absolutely. Up next on the track, the girls' 1,600-meter run. It's four laps, one mile around the track, and we have got a really big field for the boys and the girls' field. Let's take a look at our participating athletes in the girls' 1,600-meter run. In so they line up in alleys. We have three different alleys, one, two, and three, because of the way that we group runners. So we'll take a look at each alley. In alley one is going to be Brindley Moody of Lincoln View, Sarah Camphouse of Columbus Grove, Breslin Rohr of St. John's, Morgan Horston of Ottoville, Alana Raspin of St. John's, Trinity Salazar of Paulding will finish out alley one. In alley two, Elena Moore of Bodkins, Lily Montgomery of Columbus Grove, Ava Milligan of Lincoln View, Rachel Harshbarger of Anna, Chloe Powell of Riverdale, and Sarah Ryder of McComb. In the final alley, lane, or in alley three, excuse me, is Brittany Arnold of Botkins, Allison Woodruff of Riverdale, Serenity Williamson of Anna, Reagan Zahander of Arlington, Bryn Horseman of Ottoville, and rounding out the field is Adriana Carwile of Holding. You take a look at the best time in the field. Elena Mon comes in at 521. That is just incredible for this time of year. And really, when you look at the field, Nate, no one's close to her other than Brittany Arnold from Botkins at 526. And 526 sounds close to 521, but in the track world, that's a pretty big gap. It, it is. And when you look at these distance runners, you know, um, it, it can get a little interesting at times. Sure. Because you know, there are a lot of really good distance runners throughout the whole state and in our area, but they don't always get to see each other, especially early in the season. So a lot of times you see these distance runners out there trying to run uh, against themselves. You know, we do see lap traffic at times, especially when you move to the farther distance in the 3,200 meter. So a lot of times these girls are so good at getting out. They know their pace. It helps when you have somebody on their shoulder and it can kind of push you. But on a night like tonight, the temperature's dropping. Right. It feels absolutely beautiful out here. There's a little bit of a breeze, but no Nothing that's going to, you know, hurt you as far as the wind goes. You know, tonight's a night where if you're a distance coach talking to your runner, it's like, let's go set some PRs tonight. And at 521, which is an outstanding seat time, even that against the record from 2015 at 512 from Flora Chloe from Bodkins, that's, that's, a, that's a big gap. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how we start this race. You know, any more, you know, with these miles, especially for as special, as specialized as the mile is starting to get um, for all these runners. You see these girls almost out here sprinting, and, you know, anymore, you know, I couldn't run one lap at the pace that they run for. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We're just getting started on lap one here of the girls' 1,600-meter run. Danny Holbrook and Nate Garlock from Columbus Grove High School, the Columbus Grove Invitational. And we have not yet looked at the participating team. We've talked about a lot of these squads here, but let's just go through the, uh, the teams that are participating tonight. We have the Macomb Panthers, the Arlington Red Devils, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, the Fort Jennings Musketeers, the Anna Rodkins, the Bodkins Trojans, the Lincoln View Lancers, Ottaville, 
Also participating is Paulding, St. John's, Ada, Riverdale. So a great field tonight and a lot of the best athletes in Northwest Ohio. Yeah, as you take a look at this first lap coming through, right now being led by the two Bobkin runners and the Lincoln View runner. Looks like that's uh, Brindley Moody out in front along with Alana Mann and Brittany Arnold coming through in a nice pace so far. 5.26 seat time for uh, Brittany Arnold. Uh, Alana Mann, as you already mentioned, 5.21. And then a 5.36 by Brindley Moody. So she's really pushing herself tonight, trying to get out there and lower her time. So they've completed the first lap. Hey, you've got some uh, results from previous events here. Let's take a look at some winners already for the evening. Yeah, so uh, we got a little bit of time here. I'd like to recognize um, some of our winners. But prior coming onto the air tonight, field events got underway as long as did the 4 by 800 meter relay. The uh, results of the girls 4 by 8 Botkins came away with the victory in a time of 10.09.47. They were followed by Columbus Grove, Lincoln View, Riverdale, St. John's, Anna, Arlington, and then rounding out the scoring of the top eight was Ottoville. When you take a look at the boys' side for that 4 by 8 they were... Uh, Came away victorious was Lincoln View. It was a very close one. Lincoln View won an 8-27-14. Really Columbus Grove right behind them, though, just by three seconds. F an 8-30.40. Third place, Botkins. Fourth place, Anna. Riverdale was in fifth. Ottoville sixth. Ada seventh. And Paulding rounded out the scoring in the boys' 4x8. For the girls' 100-meter hurdles. As we saw, Liv Lindemann did come away with a victory as she won in 15-4-1. Jessa Bergai from Ottaville comes away in second place. London Reese, even with the injury, still took home second. Fourth place, Chelsea Meckledowney of Anna. Fifth, Leah Monin of Bonkins. Sixth place, Kendall Rawl. Seventh place, Mila Kemper. And in eighth place was Emma Wells. Boys, 110-meter hurdle finals. Jackson Brown came away victorious in the time of 16.27. Leighton Blankenmeyer of Columbus Grove was two. Garrett Tremont of Ottaville, three. Peter Vance of McComb, four. Cody Ricker of Lincoln View, five. Trenton uh, Heacock of Arlington was six. Dalton Wick of Anna was seven. And Julian Grouse of Ada was eighth. Girls, 100-meter dash results. St. John's comes away with the victory there as Alex Kesson wins in a time of 12.86. Liv Lindemann second. 13.05. That was a great race. That was that, a really good and race. Alex was just <laughs> able to hold off the hard charging Liv Lindemann. And Audrey Myers of Riverdale, third. Nakia Kimmon of Jefferson, fourth. Ella Roach of Riverdale, fifth. Kirsten Jackson, St. John, sixth. Abby George of Anna was seventh. And Allison Thompson from Columbus Grove was eighth. So look at the three lead runners on the lap here. We've got both the girls from Bodkins, Elena Mon and Brittany Arnold, along with Brindley Moody up the lead pack there. So a great finish expected here at the girls' 1,600-meter run. Try to get through a couple of more results Absolutely. for everybody here. The boys' 100-meter dash results. Justin Richards of Anna came away victorious. 11.43 was his winning time. And second place was Braxton Althauser of Macomb. Xavier Meckledowney of Anna was third. Cole Horston of Jefferson, fourth. Logan Jolliffe of Ada, fifth. Andrew Swisher of Macomb was sixth. Keegan Bam of Columbus Grove was seventh. And Boston Reynolds of Delphus Jefferson came in eighth. Girls four by two. Winner was Anna with a time of one of 48-4-0. Second, Columbus Grove. Bodkins third. Jefferson fourth. St. John's fifth. Riverdale sixth. Macomb seventh. And I believe in eighth place, I think that actually might be the boys. I think some of my pages might have been a little bit out of order here. So we'll get that one and we'll finish up that one for you. So here comes our three girls leading this race as they come down the home stretch. One, two, three, Lincoln View and the two Bodkins runners. Here they come as young Brindley Moody trying to hold off the field here. And what a race by Moody. Comes in in a seat time of 536, and she is going to take this victory home. Uh, just a great, like we said, coming out here in the weather conditions tonight, you know, you go attack this track and try to lower that time, and she did exactly that. Yeah, and I'm excited to see her time when we get that up here in the booth, but a great job by that young lady, a freshman. That's, <laughs> that's big news for the folks in Lincoln View, so a great job by that young lady, and a great job by the two girls from Bodkins, Elena Mon, the sophomore. And also her teammate, Brittany Arnold, a junior. They did a great job of finishing second and third. 
as the field wraps up here from Columbus Grove High School. You say you got another one there? So as I was looking through the pages, actually didn't we actually had a tie okay. for uh, seventh as uh, both McComb and Ada, the girls four by two, they both ran one of 59, eight of five, and they split the points there between the two of them uh, to wrap up the scoring for the girls four by two. Nate, we've got a great crowd on tap out here tonight. The stands are absolutely full. We've got a lot of people around the track and uh, Look, this weather is fantastic. If you've not been out to the Columbus Grove Invitational or any other Invitational in Northwest Ohio, do yourself a favor and get out and watch these kids run. It is an absolute awesome sport, and uh, Nate and I have been uh, covering it for years, and uh, we really enjoy it. That'll wrap up the girls' 1,600-meter run. When we come back, we'll have the boys' 1,600-meter run. You're watching High School Track and Field on WOSN. Back here at Columbus Grove High School, Danny Hilbert, Nate Garlock at the Columbus Grove Invitational. Up next on the track, the boys' 1,600-meter run. And my goodness, Nate, we got a ton of kids in this one. Yeah, lots of mile runners here tonight uh, for all the schools here involved. We'll take a look at everybody is going to line up on the track tonight. Starting first in the first alley, Trent Koch of Columbus Grove, Park Parker Schnippel of Bopkins, Wyatt German of Onoville, Wesley Fote of Anna, Eli Jones of Paulding, Josh Lemieux of Paulding, Dakota Gossman of Ada, and starting in Alley 2 is going to be Luke Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove, Colin Dosick of Modkins, Evan Johns of Lincoln View, Cade Regal of Arlington, Mason German of Fort Jennings, Daniel Waller of Macomb, Dylan Schaefer of Fort Jennings, and Dylan Shaheen of Arlington. In Alley 3, John Young of Anna, Connor Baldorf, Baldorf excuse me, of Lincoln View, Ethan Warren of Riverdale, Andrew Woodruff of Riverdale, Matthew Horseman of Ottoville, Jack. Uh, Which one? Looking at a pronunciation <laughs> here. Panaguia. Panaguia. That's why. That's why you're the best partner in the biz, <laughs> Mr. Holbrook, uh, uh, of Macomb, and Henry Holman of St. John's to round out our runners here tonight. The record here in the Columbus Grove Invitational for the boys' 1600 meter run. Brendan Seifker from Ottaville, 431. Partner, I don't drive my car around the track that fast. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to get uh, about a lap and a half done in that in that time frame right now. That was in 2018. That young man had some wheels. I'm here to tell you, uh, we don't have anybody with a seed time like that. We are. We've got some down in the 445s and 448s. So maybe we, you know, maybe in tonight's weather we'll see something special. Yeah, we saw a big time drop in the girls' mile, so we may see the same thing here in the boys' mile, so we might be on record watch one more time. So here they go, taking off in the boys' 1,600-meter run. The boys, in, the boys' race is always a little bit interesting. You always tend to see a little bit more pack running yes. when it comes to the boys' race than you do the girls' race. They get together. So it's always kind of interesting to see who's going to jump out in front, try to lead that pack, who's okay with settling in, and then trying to judge when you might see they might make that move. They jump out of that pack, try to see if they can't uh, take off into the lead. You know, a lot of it is just judging, okay, is this going to hurt my pace too much? Do I just need to break loose? And as you can see, both Columbus Grove runners thinking just that as they are out leading one and two right now coming around into the uh, final 100 here the first lap. Nate, when you when you coached and you had a kid that was really, really good at the 1600, even the 3200, did you encourage him to get out and set the pace? Or what, what was your strategy in that race? So a lot of it just depends. You know, it's not always the greatest answer, sure, sure. right? But, right. you know, every runner is a little bit different, and it's all about knowing your runner and yep. knowing what their strengths are. Some guys are good right from the front. They get out there, they know their pace, they know how to push themselves, they know if they're behind where they can run. They can, And then you have sometimes you have runners where their strength is chasing. Yep. They need to have somebody that is pulling them around. Me, yeah. They gotta have somebody to stare at. They've gotta have that that almost that pacing and then, you know, they, they're good to take it all in that last, you know, two fifty or so. So a lot of it's just about knowing your runners. Um, you know, everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses and year to year, sometimes the same runner can their strength and weakness can even change. Yeah, and, and it's a, that's a great answer. That's exactly what I was looking for. A lot of times when I'll watch the Olympics or NCAA track and field, which I, I watch a lot of, and you hear these guys talk 
talk about it being in the 1600 meter, and you're exactly right. Some of these guys need someone in front of them to set a strong pace, and then they can judge, am I going to keep up with him? Where am I going to make my move? What am I going to do to win this race? You know, these distance races, and, and pretty much all, all track races, you know, it, it's, there's so much mental toughness that goes into it and you know being able to get your mind right whatever it's going to take to get you into that right frame of mind to run the way that you're capable of running I was fine with you know as you know as a coach I wasn't going to change a lot when it came sure. to that makeup as long as you know you had that mental toughness and that wasn't something they needed to get worked on and you know what we, let's figure out what works for you and then we'll build what we need to do around that did you know that WSN is a viewer-supported nonprofit ministry? Every spring, we launch a spring funding campaign. Would you make a donation? Our goal is $50,000. Donate online at WTLW.com slash donate or call 419-339-4444. The Spring to Life funding campaign continues through Mother's Day. Let's take a look at a couple of more finals here while we have a minute. As we take a look at the boys' pole vault, that was going to be won by Noah Goki of Columbus Grove with a vault of 13 feet. Zach Tackett of Riverdale was second. Trevor Baxton of Columbus Grove third. Isaac Klinker of Anna fourth. Quint Snipke of Ottoville fifth. Adam, Adam Brinkman of Ottoville was in sixth. He also tied with Clay Hurt of Arlington. And in eighth place, Tucker Hazelton of Ada. For the girls' high jump, it was won by Kennedy Dosick of Bodkins with a jump of 4 feet 10 inches. Hannah Griffith of uh, Paulding was second. Kirsten Jackson of St. John's third. Shea Berger of Riverdale fourth. Mariah King of Anna fifth. Kendall Palti, Columbus Grove tied for fifth, as did Victoria Heitkamp of Anna. And then in a tie for eighth was Sophia Braun and Regan Schloss of Bodkins and Anna, respectively. And so right now, two Columbus Grove runners are in the first and third position. And Nate, as a coach, we understand how important that is to win an invitational like this. Those are huge points. If it stays like this, that's 16 points for Columbus Grove in one event. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what, you know, when you have, can have depth on your team, when you huge. look at a team, you know, like Columbus Grove traditionally has and a lot of other teams in our area that have those big track teams, that depth of being able to get, you know, two runners, you know, in the top four or five that can score consistently no matter what that race is, that's when you see those points really start adding up. You know, Columbus Grove, too, one of their other strengths for years and years of years has been their throwing program, you this know, the fantastic. shot and disc and what they've been able the to do. Family. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so as you see the lead runners coming through here, and we're having a fight for second as Columbus Grove did not want to settle for first and third. They went first and second. And if they pull this one off, that'll be 18 huge points for Grove. And it looks like the Anna Runner is going to edge him out. But still, 16 points for Grove. And, and Nate, we look at when you go farther in the season and we get, and people have asked me this, well, how, how do you win state meets with 40 and 45 and 50 points? And, you know, you tell them that you less runners in the event as far as per team. And so it's huge to have depth. That's a great point when you talk about depth for a small school. Yeah, absolutely. And an invitational running in, in this time of year, it's just it's a lot different than when you start looking at um, really about state. You know, yes, like when you right. start regionals, it can a little bit sure. because you still have some teams that can send quite a few down there. But everywhere else, if you ha if you can cultivate that depth and you you can get that going through your team, you're going to have a lot of success as a program. So the boys finishing up here in the 1600 meter run. Columbus Grove goes one three. And they are split by the Bodkins runner. As he does a great job of getting the second place finish. That'll be eight huge points for excuse me, Anna. I said Bodkins, Anna, correct? As the Anna Rockets got in there at second place. You know, we just mentioned uh, the strength of Columbus Grove that for years has been that throwing program. Got the boys' shot results right here. First place, Columbus Grove, A.J. Schaefer, a toss of 53 feet, 10 inches to take a home the victory there. Jack Woods, Appalding second, Stephen Smith, and Lincoln View third. Ted Couch of Columbus Grove was in fourth. Uh, Elijah Gibbs of Macomb, fifth. Noah Bormuth of McComb was in sixth. Slade Gossman of Anna, ninth, and in eighth place, Colton Plyman of Botkins. Well, look, I, I watched A.J. Schaefer all fall long just destroy quarterbacks in this part of the state, so am I surprised that he has the strength to win the shot, but not at all. <laughs> that young man is a fantastic athlete, and you're right, they do a great job of throwing out here in Columbus Grove.
Up next on the track, the boys 4x100 meter relay. And this, Nate, is all about speed and precision handoffs. And we talked about that earlier tonight, that it's not the fastest team that gets around. It's the team that gets the baton around the fastest. Yeah, absolutely. And we've talked about, you know, the conditions and all the things tonight. And we are on record watch one more time as Anna comes in with a seed time of 44.20, oh which is the record here at the Columbus Grove invite. So we'll have to wait and see if that falls. They are going to line up in lane one, Lincoln View, Cody Kittle, Tenzi Coyle, Corbin Evans, Cordan Thomas, and lane two, McComb, Andrew Swisher, Braxton Altenhauser, Peter Vance, Peyton Baldridge. Lane three is Anna Chase Murray, Ben McDermott, Xavier Meckledowney, and Justin Richards. Lane four, Delphus Jefferson, Lucas Grothaus, Trent Teeman, Cole Horston, and Boston Reynolds. Lane five, Ottoville, Michael Turnwald, Quentin Snipke, Garrett Trentman, Alex Lease, and in lane six, Columbus Grove, Keegan Bam, Grant Eversall, Lucas Mertz, and Trenton Daniels. So they're getting set up here on the track. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring Everybody, Nate, in this event, you, you all, and I, I used to talk to people about this all the time, you always need five runners. You always need that guy and that girl in reserve who's ready to go if something happens to one of your other runners. I mean, it's nice to have Danny, but exactly. not all of us. Right. <laughs> not all of us have had that luxury. I didn't, I didn't say I always had that. I just said it's yeah. nice to have that fifth runner. <laughs> It'd be nice if you had the six, seven, eight, ninth runner to be able to do it too. Oh, you're saying if you're coaching basketball, you'd like to have a front yeah, line of six, eight, right. six, nine, six, ten. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks for commentating on that one with me. <laughs> You know, we talk about, you know, I think a lot of what gets lost in track and field, one of the fun things that I find interesting, sure. and, you know, it's because I've been involved in track for most of my adult life, you know, it's it's the different technique and it's a strategy, and it's all the things that actually go into a race that people don't understand. When you're running a relay, like, oh, you run fast, you hand it off, you know, make sure you hold the baton, <laughs> and you go in. There's so much more to it, getting the correct steps, getting lined up in the blocks right. What hand you carry the baton yep. in, yep. the baton never should ever leave the middle of the track. So you, have, so you have to line things up so the guys getting are comfortable receiving in their left sure. or their right. All these things go into play when you want to have a successful relay. So we are just about ready to get started in the boys' 4x100 meter relay. And again, Nate said we're on record watch as we could see this record fall tonight at the Columbus Grove Invitational. Set. They are in the set position. We'll see right out the gate here how the exchange works for Anna. As a good start out there in lane six by Columbus Grove as they're going to get the handoff first. Nice, really nice handoff. A little bit, Ottoville, a little bit of a struggle right there. Anna trying to make up some ground. You're seeing Anna come through the middle of that zone there. Just a great handoff. And watch this. And another excellent handoff by Anna. And that's going to propel them into the lead as they are going to be pushed on the outside by Grove. Here comes Anna down the middle of the track as they'll get it to the anchor runner. And it is Anna with a clear lead in the boys' 4x100 meter, followed by Jefferson, followed by Grove. And Jefferson did a nice job of making up steps there. And they'll finish runner-up in this one. Anna wins a runaway. Yeah, great races. Anna made quick work once they got into that second leg. And once they had that lead, it was just a matter of extending it. So we will wait to see what the official time was to see if we had another record fall here at the Columbus Grove invite. We'll make sure we get that to you guys as soon as we have results. You saw, Nate, you saw when in this exchange on the second, on the second handoff, and talk a little bit about that runner that gets to run the straightaway as opposed to the curve, because there's thinking in that. <laughs> there is, and well, there's strategy as well. You know, being able to run the curve, you know, and, and being able to do that successfully, you want to be on the bottom part of the track. You want to be close to the line. Everything is, you're running a race where tenths and hundredths of a second matter. Exactly. So you're trying to find that time somewhere on the track. Um, and, you know, when you talk about where you line up, who can run a curve better, you know, making sure that you're leaning into the curve and, and where you're lined up and making sure that you keep, like I said, the baton in the middle of the track. They had an, uh, uh, an unusual exchange down there in the second lane where they actually came across body. It's usually not something you see, but it worked really well for them. So, you know, all that came together, and they ran a great race tonight. When we come back, we'll watch the girls run the 400-meter dash, followed by the boys. It's one lap around the track. You're watching high school track and field right here on WOSN.
Back here at Columbus Grove High School for the girls' 400-meter dash. It's one lap around the track. Is this is this a sprint, Nate, or is this a, what do you call this one here? Uh, anymore, this is you know, used that 400 used to kind of fall into that you know when yeah. you would break things up, got sprints, mid distance and distance, and yeah. 400 kind of fall into maybe that mid distance. And then kids not, bigger, any, yeah. not anymore. <laughs> bigger, stronger, faster. <laughs> yep, these 400s are nothing but sprints. This is my least favorite event to ever compete in. <laughs> uh, the kids who can run 400 oh, and the ones who like, I mean, they're all nuts anyway. They can't. Yeah. You can't, You're but I have right. so much respect for these kids and being able to run this event and the ones who love it. And this is their, oh, this is a brutal race. <laughs> it's tough. Let's take a look at the field for tonight's girls' 400-meter dash. In that lane one is Lily Vonderwell of St. John's. In lane two, Jordan Smith of Ada. Lane three, Jenna Walters of Anna. Ava Reed's in lane four. She's from Anna. Lauren Aukmoody is from Columbus Grove, and she's in lane five. And in lane six, Kaylee Gillespie of St. John's. This record was set in 2008 at one minute flat by Jamie Lewis from Columbus Grove. So uh, best seed time coming in is a 102. Maybe we might see another record fall. We'll see how it all plays out. And two seconds is, is a lot of time <laughs> in this right. race. It, it really is. Um, you know, that's one of those unique things about track as well. But, you know, night like tonight, these are ideal running conditions. It's even cooling down to make it even better. Typically, you see a lot of 200 runners really stretch out in a 400-meter race and prepare for the 200 all season long by running the 400 to get stronger. So they are off and underway in the girls' 400-meter dash. Middle of the track there, you're looking at the two Anna runners, Jenna Walters and Ava Reed. And they look like they've almost eliminated that stagger already. As they are trying to chase down Lauren Ockmoody of Columbus Grove. And I think they're going to have that, it looks like, as like we mentioned, the stagger. Stagger, you're right. Lauren's out on that outside. The two Anna runners side by side as they come into that curve. Ockmoody's doing a great job of holding them off. She's going to have a tough time as they get the inside lap there on the curve. So we'll see what happens here as they come towards the home stretch. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit too much Anna that time. There's a lot of distance yeah. here that is with that separation. But you see Ockmoody not giving up. And now you see a kick out of her trying to hold on to see if she can't take over second place. But it looks like Anna's going to go ahead and take one and two here in the 400. And you are exactly right as Anna with 18 big points in the girls' 4 by 100 And Lauren Ockmoody, she'll get six big points for the Grove Bulldogs. You know, these points are going to come up big, especially when we talked about it during the boys' um, mile run earlier. And, you know, how um, how big it is when you can have that depth and you can get that kind of points coming away from uh, one event. Excuse me. And, you know, Anna right there, like you mentioned, 18 huge points for their team. And they're doing something special here tonight, Nate. They're honoring the 2003 Columbus Grove State Track and Field Championship in front of our booth here. So a great honor for those young men out there. Yeah, you know, a lot goes into winning state titles. And sometimes, you know, winning a state title in any sport is incredibly difficult and a huge accomplishment. But I do think there are, there are times where there are some sports that maybe it doesn't get as much attention as others. And track is one of those because a lot of times when people look at track, they look at it as an individual sport. They don't look at it as a team. And, you know, you're looking at one heck of a team down there. You know, you heard some names, Blaine Mag, some of these names from the past. You know, we talked about the throwing prowess of, of some of those kids. and. What Columbus Grove, the, the stretch and the run that they had um, during that time and what they were able to accomplish in the state championships and the records that they sent was just very, very impressive. And it's glad to see you know them get honored here tonight. So congratulations to the 2003 Columbus Grove Bulldogs State Championship Boys track and field team. Back here at Columbus Grove High School, the boys 400 meter dash. It's one lap around the track and the meet record for the boys is 49-9 set in 2006 by Jared Crow from Arlington. I remember that young man who was a fantastic athlete in the BBC and to run under 50, Nate, that's pretty impressive. Oh yeah, absolutely, especially I mean the Bulldog invite is pretty much about the same time every year, so <laughs> right. to, be, to hit under 50 already is just, I mean those times like that are, that's why they're records. I mean, yeah, they're, right, just right. they're just phenomenal <laughs> times. They're kids that take it to another level. <laughs> yes. Let's take a look at the field for tonight's run. In lane one, we'll have Cohen Cox of Lincoln View in lane two, Luke Donaldson of Riverdale. Lane three is Trent Teeman of Adelphus Jefferson. Daniel Don Donaldson is in lane four from Riverdale. Aiden Blankenmeyer from Columbus Grove's lane five, and Trenton Barraza of Columbus Grove is in lane six. 
Top seed time belongs to Trent Teeman of Jefferson with a seed time of 52 flat. You take a look at all those seed times, Nate, and they're all relatively close. This is probably the closest seed or the closest race we've had tonight as far as seed times. Yeah, I mean you're 100% correct, and this should be an absolutely phenomenal race. You know, again, it's just all-out sprint. So as you can see, these guys going out hard right from the beginning. There's a lot of weight room training in this race right here because a stronger athlete is a better athlete. And when they come around that last curve, Nate, it's everything you need. Yeah, I, you know, you <laughs> say, people say it's, it's mental, it's strength, it's in the leg. I, don't, I just think it's guts. When you hit that, <laughs> when you hit that last 100, yeah. everything comes out of you. You just see that finish line. You start seeing the, the wobbly legs yes. and guys just there just draining every ounce of energy out of themselves. So here they come around the last curve as they head for the home stretch in the boys' 400-meter dash. Looks like Donaldson there, Riverdale, Donaldson. has a little bit of a lead, but Columbus Grove trying to push it. Both their runners right on his shoulders. Blank and Myron Barraza look like they're going to go one, two. What a finish. Columbus Grove comes around and unbelievable. And that second place, I'm not we'll real have sure to wait who got to see. That. Trent Teeman from Jefferson. Columbus Grove did edge him out. We got the official got word the official from up here word. in the press box. So Columbus Grove with 18 huge points as they go one and two here in the 400. Pardon what a race. Me. Yeah, you called that. You said that was going to be the best race of the night, and by golly, it was. That was a fantastic finish there as Columbus Grove gets 18 big points in the boys' 400-meter dash. Up next on the track, the girls' 300-meter hurdles. And I know you may argue with me a little bit on this one, partner, because you talked about how 400 is a really tough event. I think, in my opinion, this is the toughest event in track and field. Yeah, that's a pretty good opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, I will definitely give you that one. You know, I think the 400 is brutal, but, you know, pretty much the 300 is that, except jumping over stuff. <laughs> and I agree so with you. add the 400 this, this plus is, jumping over hurdles. Yes, this is, and, you know, honestly, Oh, you know, this may be something you do know or don't know, but, you know, Ohio is one of the few states where it's the 300 hurdles. Right. Now, Everywhere else it's the 400 yep. hurdles, and then I that one by far wins. as hardest thing to do ever. Uh, but we'll take a look at how they line up here in Heat 4. In lane 1 is Kendall Rollin of Riverdale. Chelsea McEldowney of Anna is in lane 2. Liv Lindemann in lane 3 from Jefferson. Jessa Burgay of Annaville lane 4. Brent Fortman of Columbus Grove in 5. And Kendall Palti is in lane 6 from Columbus Grove. So a good start there. You see Liv Lindemann. We've seen her all evening here as she's ran the 100. She's ran the 100 hurdles. She was part of the 4x2 relay. And here she comes in the girls' 300-meter hurdles. Bryn Fortman looks like she's running a nice race, as is Linda Lindemann. Kind of with the stagger, you kind of have to look at who jumps to the hurdle first. That kind of gives you an idea of where they're at, as Lindemann that time was the first one around as she's broken the stagger. Here comes Lindemann as she comes down towards the home stretch. She's followed closely by McEldowney from Anna, as McEldowney's gaining a little bit of ground here. See Fortman right there had to change up her feet. That's going to slow her down a little bit. See Lindemann really stretching out to get to that last hurdle. You know, and she's going to come away with this victory, it looks like, as these last couple of hurdles. And that is actually a great strategy by Liv Lindemann because the last couple of hurdles that you tend to see cause runners the most exactly. trouble because as you, it's a grueling race. It is very, very difficult. And as they're coming down that back stretch, all of a sudden the legs maybe not quite as strong. They're feeling a little weak, a little wobbly. And you see a lot of runners struggle with those last couple of hurdles. So Liv Lindemann stretching that out, getting her stride open, making sure her legs are staying strong, carried her right over those hurdles into a victory. She gets 10 big points for the Jefferson Lady Wildcats. Liv Lindemann competing in four events tonight. Up next on the track, the boys' 300-meter hurdles. A special thanks to all of our underwriting sponsors, Spencerville Athletic Boosters, Charles River, Tabler's drive Through, Macomb Family Dental, Van Crest of Delphus, The Creamery, and Quest Federal Credit Union. We could not put this event on tonight without your help. We thank you so much from WOSN. It's the boys' 300-meter hurdle finals. The record at the Columbus Grove Invitational by, <laughs> I know you know this name, Heath Nichols, one of the best athletes in Northwest Ohio has ever seen. Scene, and he ran a 39-6 in 2008. And I don't know if you remember some of those epic battles between him and Greyhorn from Waynesville Goshen and uh, just fantastic athlete. Yeah, that was, you know, we've had a lot of phenomenal runners in this area, but I'll tell you what, those those years of watching those guys, <laughs> especially knowing what they went on to oh accomplish, is just, I mean, you can't forget the time, you know, Joe Horn was around at the uh, same time as well. And 
it just was what we got to watch during that Incredible. time was crazy. Let's take a look at our field for tonight's 300-meter hurdles. In uh, lane one, Cody Ricker of Lincoln View. Lane two, Leighton Blankenmeyer of Columbus Grove. Lane three, Garrett Tretman of Ottoville. Lane four, Julian Grouse of Ada. In lane five, Peter Vance of McComb. And in lane six, Trenton Haycock of Arlington. Don't anticipate a 39 in this one, but we shall see. No. Some really good times with the best seed time at 42-4 from Garrett Trentman from Ottoville. It's a good start there from the Ottoville hurdler as he gets out and is over the hurdle first as he is coming out just blazing right now. Yeah, you, you take a look at him, Nate, and I know technique is not as important in the 300 as in the in the 100. It is important, don't get me wrong, but you just look at how relaxed he looks coming across the hurdle. Yeah, and actually, as you just said that, he got a little over-rotated there <laughs> right. with that back leg and almost got tripped up as he came around that time a little bit better as he's going to come away with a big lead here down this front stretch. And you look at him pulling in and look at those strides and watch that lead leg go over top of that bringing that trail leg behind him, and he does a great job. He's going to win this one easy. Yeah, the big things for him moving forward is he's going to have to work on is just that over-rotation, keeping that core, yeah. you know, engaged, make it, you know, he's a little wobbly in those lanes. And today it's a good race to run. He's out in front, so it doesn't kind of come quite into much as into play. But when you start moving through and we get into that tournament play in postseason, you know, those little wobbles sometimes can cost you. But a tremendous run by him. He comes away with a victory and uh, another 10 points on the board for Ottoville. So we're going to step aside and Take another break. When we come back, we'll have the girls and boys 800 meter run. You're watching High School Track and Field on WOSN. Welcome back to Columbus Grove High School for tonight's Columbus Grove Invitational. Danny Holbrook, Nate Garlock, giving you all the viewing pleasure here for tonight's Invitational. I didn't know what word to use there. So, what a viewing pleasure? How's that, Nate? <laughs> hey, you know, it is. It's been, you know, what on a night like tonight with That's some of right. the races we've had to, it has been, uh, you know, viewing pleasure is a great way of putting it. That's right. Let's take a look at the field for the girls' 800 meter run. It's two laps around the track. In Alley One, we're looking at Abby Meckledowney from Anna Breslin Roar of St. John's, Morgan Horston of Ottoville. In Alley Two, Grace Gutman of Botkins, Allison Woodruff of Riverdale, Victoria Heitkamp of Anna, and Alana Judy of of Botkins. In Alley 3, Brendan Moody of Lincoln View, Jade Roeder of Columbus Grove, Lydia Damasio from Ada, and Reagan Zahander from Arlington. And the meet record in this event is from 2008, 2 minutes and 24 seconds, Molly Mag from Ottaville. That's Top pretty, seed pretty time good. coming in tonight was uh, Grace Gutman from Botkins, uh, 2.33. And it's also tied with Brenlin Moody of Lincoln View. So Brenlin's already had a pretty busy night. We saw her run a little bit ago, had a great run. Um, and now she comes in, the freshman, with uh, tied for the top seed time. So a couple of underclassmen, Brenlin Moody, a, so a junior, and Grace Gutman, a sophomore. Great 800 runners are just different cats. I mean, they are just different. They they have, and you said it earlier, it's just guts and enthusiasm and pure joy for running because this is a really, really tough event. Because we talked about the difficulty of some of these other races beforehand, yes. the 400 and the 300 hurdles. Well, you know, in this 800, you have to run at a pretty good pace for sure. a 400. And then you sprint a 400 after that. That <laughs> just takes it takes a different mentality, you know. I've, I've been able to see a lot of 800 races. I've seen some very good 800 runners, and it's just one of those things. I mean, the training, and the the energy, and the effort, and the skill that goes into any of these races, whether it's you know the 100 meter dash or the two mile run, everything in between, it is just phenomenal. I, I you know. We are very fortunate in Northwest Ohio, the amount of, you know, um, tremendous track athletes we've had to watch sure. over the last 20 plus years. It's, it's, I mean, it's been incredible. And I think sometimes we even take it for granted, you know, people think that these kids are just going out here and running and what happens well, happens and it's just, it's far from it. And you, and you see a record like we have here at 224 and you think to yourself, that's really good. And it is a very good record, as you said, that it's the same time each year, so it's early in the year. And then you get to the end of the season and you go to Columbus for the state track and fit and you see girls Running 212, 213, and then you see guys <laughs> running 24, 25. You know, it's just amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's just been 
Yeah, I, I, it's the times that you see some of these guys run, and you know, and we talked about when you get down to Columbus, you start seeing the sub twos and all those it's things. Ridiculous, it's yeah. just, yeah, it's and when just I say two four, I'm saying we've seen better than that. Oh yeah, it's just it's yeah. incredible what these guys can and, and girls can do, and you know that's why it's fun to come out here. I'm glad that WOSN broadcasts these track meets and people get a chance to watch them. They used to not be a thing; track wasn't a popular right, thing to right. watch, but it is so exciting. These races are so good, and you get a chance to showcase these kids. And you know, that's funny you should say that, Nate. As I was coming up to the booth tonight. Uh, several people from the area stopped me. I have my OSN hat on, my shirt on, and they said, hey, we really appreciate you guys coming out here. We love the coverage, and that, that makes it all worthwhile. When, 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 you know, there's a lot of people watching their kids and their grandkids and their neighbor's kids, and it's just a great sport, and, I, and I'll continue to be a cheerleader for track and field. You see the freshman here coming down this front stretch. We talked about her having a good race, and she is way out in front. Look at her go. What a race. Brindlin. Brindlin Moody. <laughs> yeah, Brindlin decided with about 250 left to go. You saw her make a move on the back stretch, and she just got tired of waiting. Yeah. And you can it paid off as she comes away with a big uh, victory. Yeah, Lincoln View community, get ready to watch that young girl run for the next four years. She is doing a fantastic job on the track as she wins the girls' 800 meter run. Up next on the track, the boys' 800 meter dash, and we take a look at the meet record for the boys. And that is Brendan Seifker from Ottaville at two minutes and one second flat in 2017. And we've got a pretty fast field tonight, but no 201 out there, Nate. Now there is a 207 Connor Baldorf of a Lincoln View, the top seed coming in. Brendan Seifker, you know, we mentioned some of the, the names from the past that people might remember. Another prolific uh, mid-distance and distance runner from the area. As we take a look at the runners in Alley 1, Ethan Warren of Riverdale, Logan Mershman of Columbus Grove. Blake Bixler of Anna rounds out Alley 1. In Alley 2, Connell Baldorf of Lincoln View. Bryce Boniface of Columbus Grove. Mason Silver of Ada. Wesley Fote of Anna. In Alley 3, Creston Toe of Lincoln View. Wyatt German of Ottoville. Cade Regal of Arlington. And Ryan Koenig of Botkins. So two laps around the track here for the boys' 800-meter run. ideal conditions tonight for this track meet. We've talked about that a lot tonight, but it's, it's cooled down a little bit here in the last hour or so, but uh, it's when I say cooled down, it went from 80 to we're about 69, 70 degrees right now, yeah, which still is an absolutely ideal. Perfect night as you can take a look. A little bit darker there on the screen, but the lights kicking on here is we are coming down to the end of this one. As see the Lincoln View runners coming on the inside, trying to come up quick. Might recognize the last name of the Lincoln View runner, Creston Toe. Bailey Toe was a phenomenal, um, phenomenal uh, distance runner <laughs> for Lincoln View. Yeah, right. You know, it just kind of runs in the family as he is trying to come around and trying to track down the Columbus Grove runner as he's out to a big lead here on the first lap. We'll see if he can hold it. It's a really fast pace right now, Nate. He's really moving down the track. And he's pumping those arms, and he's got a nice lead there. Let's see if he can hold off this second lap. So you can see the rest of the back there come into view, trying to track him down. Doing a good job here so far. We'll, we'll see, though. Bryce Boniface, who comes in with a 2-11 seed time as he has a nice lead, but he is being challenged right now. You see Crust and Toe trying to track him down. A little bit of that space. I mean, gathered in right now, opening the stride, trying everything he can not to let his legs go on him, but here comes the rest of the pack. <laughs> this is where you separate the men from the boys on this last, last uh, curve here as they come out on the second lap. Yeah, he came out, really pushed that pace, was trying to get that time down, but here comes the rest of the runners. It looks like he might run out a little bit of steam. Crest and toe moves around. And it's unusual to see him passing on the curve like that, but that's their strategy, and it works really well for them right now. Here comes Toe. He's going to move around into first place. Looks like the Riverdale runner, Ethan Warren, was Lincoln, in third, but Lincoln this. View is going to go one, two. Unbelievable for the Lancers. They're going to go one, two. And here comes Columbus Grove not giving in yet either as he moves around the Riverdale runner, and a great run that time by him. Yes. 18 huge points for Lincoln View, and Grove picks up six as the third place finish.
It's the girls' 200-meter dash here at the Columbus Grove Invitational. The meet record is 25-6 in 2006 by Cheve Wright from Shawnee High School. Let's take a look at our field for tonight's girls' 200-meter dash, Nate. In lane one, Nakia Kimmett of Delphus Jefferson. In lane two, Kirsten Jackson from St. John's. Lane three, it's the 100 winner, Alex Kesson from St. John's. In lane four, Audra Myers of Riverdale. Lane five is Jenna Walters of Anna. And in lane six is Brooks Metler, Metzler of Anna. Top time coming into this one belongs to Alex Kesson with a 26-6 seed time. Nate, let's talk a little bit about running that curve on the 200-meter dash. It's not a straightaway. you got to lean into that curve a little bit. Yeah, you do, and a lot of it comes down to, you know, it, you see some kids, when you tell them to lean into the curve, it's learning what that means. Sure. It's not just kind of turning your head to the <laughs> side. Not on a motorcycle. You know, it's, <laughs> you know it, it, it's getting, it's almost all the way down at the ankles and getting the body at, the, at an angle, which also means you have to put in the right force on the onto your feet and doing everything you need to be doing to get that um, and get through that curve properly. It's also it, really important to be as close to that line on the inside as possible. You don't want to be in the middle. You don't want to be towards the top of the lane. You want to be at the very bottom riding that line. So they have been called to the blocks. There's the set position. And a really, really good start in the girls 200 meter dash. Yeah, I love the form that Alex Kesson runs with. You can see everything is very quiet up top. She's not moving around a whole lot. She gets those arms really involved in what she's doing. And I think a lot of people don't realize that the upper body is just as important as the lower body as Kesson is going to come through here and pull away for this victory. She looks really strong as she finishes that race. And that's, look, we, we talk a lot about starts, but finishes are just as important. And you saw how strong she was across the line. Yeah, she ran a great race from start to finish. And it obviously showed as she came away with a big victory. Up next on the track here at the Columbus Grove Invitational, the boys 200 meter dash. As we've got some very fast runners in this one, we take a look at our meet record from 2006. Jared Kraut from Arlington, 22-5. In lane one of this final heat will be Xavier McDowell of Anna. Daniel Donaldson of Riverdale is in lane two. Lane three, Braxton Aldhauser from Macomb. Lane four, Cole Hurston of Jefferson. In lane five, Candom Glacier from Macomb. And in lane six is Trent Teeman of Delphus Jefferson. Top seed time coming in is in lane three. That belongs to Braxton Althauser of McComb with a 23.20 seat time. Well, I said it earlier, Nate, that the 100-meter dash I thought was the closest we had as far as seed times. And we look at these, everybody's right at 23.2 to 23.9. So this this is anybody's race, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, well, we, we've talked a couple of times in, in the sprints. We talked about it during the relays. You know, when you're talking about races that come down to tenths and hundreds of a second, just like this one appears like it's going to, everything is important from your start to how you run the curve and how you open up coming down this front stretch. So they have been called to the blocks. The boys 200 meter dash here at the Columbus Grove Invitational. Danny Holbrook, Nate Garlock. There's the set call. Good start, you see. Young man from Anna really got out quick. As we only have five, it looks like we have an open lane as it looked like in lane number four, Cole Horston of Jefferson not here. So we're going to have a nice finish here for first, but it looks like it will be Aldhauser. Aldhauser. And he is being challenged by Xavier McEldowney, and what a run. Nice job there by those two young men. Yeah, as you saw, Aldhauser really come through, but McEldowney was right on his shoulder trying to push him, take him over, but in the end, Althauser a little bit too much and comes away with a 200 victory. A special thanks to all our underwriting sponsors tonight at Spencerville Athletic Boosters, Charles River, Tabler's drive Through, Macomb Family Dental, Van Crest of Delphus, The Creamery, and Quest Federal Credit Union. Thank you so much for sponsoring tonight's Columbus Grove Track Invitational. Up next Just on the track, the girls, two mile run. will be rebroadcast tomorrow at 8 o'clock WOSN. So let's take a look at the field for the girls' two-mile run, the 3,200-meter run. They are in alleys one more time as those mid-distance and distance runners are. We'll look in alley one first. Sarah Camphouse of Columbus Grove 
Hey, Ava Milligan of Lincoln View, Olivia Snyder of Lincoln View, and MC Kopak of St. John's. In the second alley, Brittany Arnold of Bodkin, Serenity Williamson of Anna, Rachel Harshberger of Anna, Chloe Powell of Riverdale, Olivia Baki of St. John's. In the third alley, Alana Mann of Bodkins, Lily Montgomery of Columbus Grove, Reagan Zahounder of Arlington, and Atlee Vent of Riverdale. You know, Nate, we haven't talked a lot about it tonight, but a lot of terms that we throw around in track and field, and the one that I talk a lot about is, uh, is a PR, and people need to understand that in track and field, you're trying to set that personal record. You're just trying to run against yourself a lot of times because you're trying to get those times up and better. Yeah, I mean, PRs are – it's one of those things we talked about, not just an individual sport but a right. team sport, but you are running against yourself. You're running against what you've done before, and you're always trying to get better, and it's the easiest way to measure that. Yeah, so did we have some girls drop out of this one? Uh, it doesn't – I'm not sure if we had a dropout yet. I haven't been able to count. It looks like we are down a few runners. But when you take a look at the meet record here, 11-31-5-7 back in 2008 by Alyssa Ellerbrock, we got two runners yes. from Bondkins, 11-23 seed time and 11-24 seed time. Alana Mann and a Brittany Arnold, they're going to take a run at that uh, new record here tonight. And great conditions to set that record in. It's not yeah, hot, it's not cold, and we can see a record fall on this one. Yeah, this is perfect distance weather, you know, and depending on who you are, too, like I, I ran distance back when I was in high school. I know it comes as a shock, but I <laughs> promise you that I did at some point. I ran distance. I, I'm not judging. I'm not, <laughs> but I just I these, couldn't hear you because you had the pizza. <laughs> but these were the elements that I loved running in. I loved running at night. Yes, I loved yes. running in this cool weather. It just eight of it an extra added feel you know it just it just kind of added something to it got me going a little bit more and, and these conditions are perfect for running so they are off and running in the girls 3200 meter run uh, while we have some time here as you see both botkins runners quickly out in front as uh, we suspect they will lead the pace for most of this race we take a look at some results trying to get everybody caught up take a look at the boys four by one final in first place was Anna with a time of 43.72, followed by Jefferson, Columbus Grove, Ottoville, Riverdale, Botkins, Ada, and rounding out the scoring was St. John's. On the girls' side for the 4x1, Ottoville comes away, or excuse me, it was Anna, as they came away victorious with a 51-6-0. They were followed by St. John's, Riverdale, Botkins, Macomb, Lincoln View, Ottoville, and Paulding. Move now to the boys, four by two. Anna comes away with a victory in a 133-2-3 final time. In second was McComb, followed by Columbus Grove, Ottoville, Lincoln View, Ada, Riverdale, and Botkins. Girls, four by two results. Anna, they win it with a time of 148-4-0. Columbus Grove was second. Botkins was third. Jefferson, fourth, St. John's, fifth, Riverdale, sixth, Macomb, seventh, and Ada was in eighth. And right now, not to interrupt you, after 13 events, the Anna girls are in first place with over 90 points right now. So take a look at the final results for the boys' 400-meter dash. Aiden Blankenmeyer of Columbus Grove comes away with the victory in a time of 52.10. He's followed by his teammate Trenton Barraza. And then Trent Tiemann of Jefferson, Daniel Donaldson, Luke Donaldson, Caleb Denman, Cohen Cox, and Jake Mooter of Anna. And they round out the 400-meter scoring. Moving over to field events, girls' disc throw. First place goes to Kenzie Scholl of Riverdale. She threw the disc 102 feet, 9 inches to come away with the victory over Lauren Martz of Columbus Grove who was behind her at 98 feet, 4 inches. Third place, Cassidy Bryan, fourth, with Cheyenne Pullman. Nicole Nesby, fifth, Lauren French, sixth, Kendall Ellerbrock, seventh, and Nora Holman was in eighth. Looking at the two-mile right now as we take a look at the distance runs for the boys. A little smaller distance, that's 1,600 meter. Luke Ellerbrock comes away with the victory in a time of 4.37.08. John Young second, Trent Cook was third, Connor Baldoff was fourth, Colin Dosick fifth, Evan John sixth, Parker Shipnell, Shipnell excuse me, was seventh, and Ethan Warren was eighth. And we will wrap this part of the um, of the results up with the girls' mile run as Brent, Brindley Moody came away with the victory. 
five, seventeen, ten, followed by Alana Mann and a Brittany Arnold of Bodkins. They came in less than a second behind her apiece. Fourth place, Allison Woodruff. Fifth was Lily Montgomery, Sarah Camphouse, sixth, Breslin Rohr, seventh, and Serenity Williamson came in eighth. So in the girls' 3,200 meter run right now, it's the duo from Bodkins. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's Brittany Arnold and Elena Mann out in front of this one. When we come back, we'll have the exciting conclusion of the girls' two mile run right here on WOSN. here for the girls 3200 meter run and as we said earlier in the broadcast the duo from Bodkins is out front and they are really ripping up the track. They are as you can see they have controlled this from start to what looks like going to be finished. Brittany Arnold, Alana Mann are in cruise control right now. They're moving through some traffic on the track but We'll you see right now, just competing against themselves. You know, right. these are things that, you know, you get competitive in practice, as you saw right there. <laughs> they you just saw that. went to make a move and said, no way, open up those strides, nice long strides, really relax with the arms. And you, know, and you look at both these girls, and, I, and, I, and just imagine practice between these two girls, the competition, and look, look how good they are. There's, there's not a lot of separation there. <laughs> no, and it'll be, it'll be a fun uh, last hundred. I'm sure that they have a lot of these challenges in practice, racing each other, a lot of personal stuff here as, you know, you love to push one another. And there goes the move, but she's going to try to come right back because we're going to have <laughs> a race great. down here to the finish. Oh, Teammates trying to go one, two. And it opens up a nice lead there to finish. But either way, no matter how that one came out, Alana Mann and Brittany Arnold were going to come away with 18 big points for her team. And I'm going to be real excited to see the times yeah. that they came up with as hey, I got a feeling we may have seen a meet record fall. Yeah, the other thing, too, is it would be interesting to see for the rest of the year uh, – how how they do as far as competition? Who wins what race? Because like I said, there's not a lot of not a lot of separation between those two young ladies. Now you know what, and you know anybody who who's coached any sport, you know, especially for you, you track people watching yeah. right now, you know, when you have two people who are, you know, very good at what they do, and and they're usually out in front, it just becomes yes. it becomes you know competing against You're, each other, yeah. pushing each other. That's who you have, you know, and it helps you because you know we mentioned earlier, not all the time that these girls, especially in the distance, on the girls and guys side. <laughs> Do they get to run against the best in the area or, or competition that's going to push them? Well, when you have that push coming from, yes, from every day own, in yeah, practice, right, right. I mean, that is a huge that's a great advantage. Point. That's a great point. Absolutely. So they're finishing up here in the girls' two-mile run. Still have a couple of runners who, got a, like you said, those Botkins girls, they were way out in front. Uh, some lap traffic coming through. We've got some more finishers coming down this straightaway now. Anna. As a runner finishing, Grove with a runner finishing. They're going to fight it out. And even, Grove even, wanted to get that <laughs> position back. And look at that. Even in the seventh, eighth, and ninth position, these girls are competitive enough that they're trying to get across that line. Oh. I love to see that. Oh, absolutely. Well, it goes back to what you said before this race started, PR. Yeah. Right? No matter where you're at on the track and no matter where you finish and where a place you get, it can still be considered a successful race oh, if you set that PR. So, yeah, maybe I didn't win it. Maybe I didn't get us points. However, but I, I shaved this, off so you know, much as time, a coach, yeah. you can go to them and say, no, but you still ran better than you ever ran. Yep. You get to set this PR or you were so close to this PR. Let's look at your race and see where we can, you know, fix that and we can narrow that time. And, you know, you have something to constantly be looking sure. and working towards. And, and that's what makes track such a unique sport. You know, when you talk about basketball and football and, you know, as a team, you know, you're like, oh, let's get that conference title as, you know, we have to do all these things. Well, here, you don't have to win the conference title no, to absolutely. still, you know, be able to top your best. And that and that is, you know, an extra motivation. Let's be honest. I mean, we're trying to get a lot of kids to run hard and absolutely. fast. Absolutely. You know, you have to you have to get that in. You know, if you can get that focus on those PRs, you know, you can really help your team as a whole. And another thing, too, you look down here on the infield. If we can get a shot of the infield, Megan, uh, look at all the teammates down there who are rooting on their their, their teammates in this. In it's, look, it's a, it's a hard race to watch. It's eight laps, and, and a lot of kids have a lot of things going on, but you see all the kids down here on the track rooting for their teammates, and it uh, just makes for a lot of camaraderie and a lot of good sportsmanship by all the kids here tonight. And a couple more hard finishes going through there as well as the girls' 3,200 meter looks like it's wrapping up. 
back here for the boys 3200 meter run as we're wrapping up the tonight's Columbus Grove Invitational and a fine field for the boys two mile run. They are moving the boys into their alleys and we will take a look at the runners here for the two mile run. Starting in alley one, John Young of Anna, Maddox Norton of Lincoln View, Kyle Edelman of Anna, Kaysen Barnes from Riverdale, Daniel Waller of Macomb, and Sheridan Maddie of Paulding. In alley number two, Luke Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove, Keaton Schnipple of Botkins, Evan Johns of Lincoln View, Andrew Woodruff of Riverdale, Wyatt German of Ottoville, Craig Jolliffe of Macomb, and Dylan Shaheen of Arlington. In the final alley, Carson Brown from Botkins, e. Evan Pitts of Columbus Grove, Ethan Duza of Ada, Mason German of Fort Jennings, Matthew Horseman of Ottoville, and Charles McClure of Paulding. The meet record is set in 2008 by Chase Violet from the Shawnee Indians at 940. <laughs> That's really moving for this time of year. Well, That's really moving. That's moving for any time of the year. It is, but if you take a look, Luke Ellerbrock, Columbus sure. Grove, 948. He's right yeah. there. You know, has an opportunity here. We already saw one meet record yes, fall, the girls' two mile, uh, right before this race. 1123 is the new meet record here at Columbus Grove. A special thanks to all of our underwriting sponsors, Spencerville Athletic Boosters, Charles River, Tabler's drive Through, Macomb Family Dental, Van Crest of Delphus, The Creamery, and Quest Federal Credit Union. Thank you so much for supporting WOSN and sponsoring the Columbus Grove Track Invitational. So it'll be interesting to see what Luke Ellerbrock does here, as at least seat time-wise, he's quite a bit ahead of most of the other runners in the field. If he decides just to go out, lead this thing right from the beginning and push the pace, and it looks like that might saying, be that the looks like what he's wanted to do. As he jumps out into the lead there. And you'll see a couple of runners probably try to hold on and see if maybe they can't let him pull them around the track a little bit, set the pace, and help themselves out. As you see a Bodkins runner pull up right on that shoulder. Yeah, I believe we've got two Bodkins runners in second and third position. You've got Columbus Grove in one and four and Bodkins in two and three. And we'll see. It'll be interesting if Botkins wants to stay right there and kind of let Luke determine how this one goes or if they're going to say, you know what, we like a faster pace and move around him. So a quick first lap here in the boys' 3,200-meter run as everybody's jockeying for position here. And we'll take a look at some more finals for the girls' long jump. First place goes to Alex Kesson of Delphi St. John's. We've called her name She's multiple times tonight. tonight. <laughs> Saw her win the 100, win the 200, and she comes away with the long jump victory with a jump of 6 feet, 5 and 3 quarter inches. Second place was Lauren Ockmoody of Columbus Grove, Abby McDowney of Anna, Audra Did you mean Myers to say 16-5 instead of 6-5? What, what did I say? 6-5. No, 16-5, <laughs> excuse me. You said 6-5. That's why they sent two of us to these things. <laughs> well, I, wanted, I didn't want to correct you, but 6-5 is not going to win the long it, jump. It, it is not. It is 16-5 and three quarters. I do not want to short Alex at all. That is a very good jump here tonight. And and then second place was Lauren Ockmoody. Abby McDowney of Anna was in third. Audra Myers of Riverdale fourth. Brooke Metzler of Anna in fifth. Camden Paul of Botkins. Sixth, seventh went to Emma Hatcher of Lincoln View, and in eighth was Isabel Moreno from Ottoville. The girls, 300 meter hurdles. The victory went to Liv Lindemann in a time of 47 8 2. Chelsea McDowney of Anna was in second. Brent Fortman of Columbus Grove, third. Fourth was Jessa Burgai of Ottoville. Fifth, Kendall Palti of Columbus Grove. Sixth, Kendall Rawl of Riverdale. Seventh, Emily O'Flaherty of Riverdale. And in eighth, Hannah Griffiths of Paulding. Boys, high jump results. The victory went to Calvin Willow of Arlington, the freshman. He jumped six foot two inches and in high jump. Uh, we'll, we'll he went that. up, not out. He went up very high, six foot two inches. Second place, Antonio Gray of Columbus Grove. He and Drew Boggs of St. John's finished third. Michael Turnwald of Ottoville was 11th. Jack Dussault of Riverdale was in fifth. Peyton Baldridge of McComb, sixth. Jared Holland and Jaron Nottage from Columbus Grove and Anna tied for seventh. So two laps down as they come to the home stretch for the third lap. We'll step aside. We'll be back to get the exciting conclusion of the boys' two-mile run. You're watching High School Track and Field right here on WOSN. 
back here at Columbus Grove High School, finishing up the boys' two-mile run. And it looks like you, what you said earlier, Nate, is going to happen here as the lead lap is the young man from Columbus Grove who's out running away from the field. Yeah, Luke Ellerbrock is running a great race right now. He has ran away from the competition, and he looks right now in this last lap to only be getting stronger. We mentioned the record that fell in the girls' 3,200 meter. That went to Brittany Arnold. And she set a new meet record here at the Columbus Grove invite. That was a great run. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that was maybe the best run of the night. And it is, and I don't have I don't have a time right now on Luke. I'm, I we won't know until the race finishes up. But he has looked really strong. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I heard um, some people talking up here in the press box. If he continued running, what he's doing that he was gonna set a PR, which PR is gonna be under what this is. He has a chance to set this record here tonight. Yeah. He looks really strong and comfortable. You see him coming around the last curve here. And he is lapping some of the field. And, and he's moving around them very well. Doesn't look like it's messing up his stride as all, at all. He had timed that really well. And you look finishing at, very strong. Nate, look at his arm swing. He goes straight up and down. There's no cross in the chest bone. And he's really got nice form. And as he's looking to try to turn this on here and finish, he does a nice job taking away a victory <laughs> here in the 3,200-meter run. Interesting to see that time when we get it. But a great job by that young man as he wins on his home track in the Columbus Grove Invitational. Second place is going to go to Botkins. They tried to hang with Luke, but he was a little <laughs> bit too much as he ended up. They tried to get out and set that pace, and it just did not happen. And third place is going to belong to Botkins, though, too. So even though the first place uh, position went to Columbus Grove, finishing second and third. Botkins gets some big points, stays with him as you see Columbus Grove come in fourth. So one and four for the Bulldogs and two and three for the Trojans of Botkins. So a great night for the two-mile runners here as they've got great temperatures under the bright lights. And we started out the meet at about 80, 82 degrees. And uh, it's cooled down now. We're in the mid-60s and just a beautiful night out here. No not, no wind to speak of. And <laughs> I don't see anybody with a jacket on. Oh, no. it's. I mean, <laughs> you couldn't ask for a better night. As you can see, the infield as we're waiting on some of the other 3,200-meter uh, participants to finish. The boys and girls, four by four. The finale of all track meets, getting ready to go at the completion of this one. Teams are in the infield warming up, getting ready. As if running one 400 wasn't hard enough, somebody <laughs> said, let's get them to run four in a row. Again, I want to thank a special thanks to all our underwriting sponsors, Spencerville Athletic Boosters, Charles River, Tabler's drive Through, Macomb Family Dental, Van Crest of Delphus, the Creamery and Quest Federal Credit Union. Thank you for all your support and making this broadcast happen. Up next on the track, the girls 4x400 meter relay, the final event of the night. And the ladies are first. They'll take their chances here. Four runners for each team, one lap apiece. And uh, Nate, this is the, uh, how do I say, this is the golden uh, the golden display of, uh, everybody watches for the 4x400. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of gotten in its own category over the yeah. years. And, you know, especially when you get into these bigger meets and you get to these last heats. And everybody's sitting around watching and, it's kind of the cream of the crop. And, you know, I think it's because, you know, with with this relay, with what these what they have to run, these athletes have to run, you know, we talked about, I mean, I told you, I, the 400 is horrible. It's a terrible <laughs> thing to run. And now you have to get four people and the teams that have four runners that can get out here, they get after this. A relay is fun anyway. Sure. You know, and then, you know, watching them have to do this, it just gets, it's just, it's exciting. It's hard to explain, really. The meet record is set in 2009 by the team from Riverdale, 408, which is it, it's hard to describe that. It really is because that's really, really fast. Well, that's every every girl on your relay running a 102. Right, right. That's I what mean, I was going to say. You're, you're 102 to one to, to a minute. And I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. So, and to find those number of girls, let's take a look at the field. So they will line up as followed in lane one: Lincoln View, Harper, Rindell, Lauren, Ann Spotch, Brindley, Moody, and Kiara Brees. And so when you get ready for set, we'll set the rest of the table here for you after the start. In lane two is Botkins, Camden, Paul, Addison, Klima, 
Grace Gutman and Addison Blindauer. In lane three, Anna Eva Reed, Victoria Heitkamp, Abby McDowney, and Jenna Walters. In lane four, Columbus Grove, Jade Roeder, Kendall Palti, Bryn Fortman, Lauren Ackmoody. In lane five, Riverdale, Emily O'Flaherty, Eden Barnes, Allison Woodruff, and Kendall Rawl. And in lane six, Lil Lily Vonderell, Evie Vonderell, Kaylee Gillespie, and Aubrey Metzger. What is the top seed for this race? Is it at four? It's going to belong to Anna. Yes, Anna yep, lane three, four, fourteen. So here they come around the first curve, and it is Anna in the first position, followed by Grove. And this stagger is going to last for about another 150 meters as they get around to the curve on the other side. They'll all be able to come into one lane. So right now, still a little bit of a stagger here. Anna looking to hand off first, though, and that's your indication that they're leading. But right behind them is Columbus Grove. So Anna in the lead, and we get another shot. We talked about it earlier about your teammates out there cheering them on. We get a shot of the wide angle there of all the kids out on the track as they come around to the finish line there. You see the kids, and you probably hear them at home as they're screaming and hollering for their teammates. A big event, the last one of the night. Yeah, the front stretch on these 4x4s four just get a little – they just get, <laughs> they get exciting. They are a lot of fun to watch. As you see Columbus Grove trying to reel in Anna here in the second leg. And to see if maybe they can take this lead coming down this home stretch. And the Anna girls right now are in first place in the Invitational. But look, Columbus Grove's got a lot of pride out here, and they're going to want to win this race on their home track. Absolutely. This is their Invitational, their track. They want to leave it with a victory. So it's Anna. It's Grove in one and two, and they are battling it out. Nice job by Anna that time. Their second leg is Abby McDowney. She's able to hold off a hard-charging Bryn Fortman. And now the freshman, Kendall Palti for Grove, gets the handoff as she's going to try to track down the third leg from Anna Victoria Heitkamp. And Kendall is able to do that and moves around and puts Columbus Grove in first. Look at Palti go as she, as she crosses over her on the curve, which you like. I'd rather see him go in the back stretch, but she does a nice job of going far out of her way to get the lead. Yeah, she didn't want to wait, didn't want to settle in there. As she's getting into a little bit of a settled pace there. He kind of saw her slow up a little bit and see if that cost her the lead. And it looks like it's going to as Heitkamp does a nice job moving around herself. You know, and sometimes you'll see runners do that, especially on those exchanges. Sure. They're so close. Like, I can go and get them. And unfortunately, when you do that, that adrenaline dump happens. And, you know, Heidkamp did a nice job not panicking, not trying to push it, anything. Is able to take this lead back. And it looks like she had actually extended here. Well, look, when, you're, when your seed time's 414, every one of your girls is disciplined enough to know how to run this race. And you're seeing it right now as Anna is really extending the lead. Absolutely. Looking to hand this off to the anchor. Jenna Walters gets it. She's going to try to hold on to this lead for Anna. But Lauren Ockmoody going to try to track her down. Watch Ockmoody as she's in the second position trying to get that victory for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. As you kind of look, and you know, I, I always use, try to use the fence as the backdrop, and you sure. try to look at the post to see if they're tracking them down. And Ock Moody, she's getting close. She is. You're absolutely right. You can see that a little bit less and less fence, <laughs> and she's trying to reel her in. We'll see if she can get it, if she has enough time, enough stamina. And the young, young lady from Anna looks pretty comfortable right now. Yeah, she's now she putting looks a little like she's, distance. Yeah, now <laughs> you kind of see it go the, almost like a little accordion that time. You saw it go in, but now... And it would be interesting to watch these two schools compete at a later date because it is so earlier in the year, and they are so close in uh, times. Jenna Walters is going to pour this one on and bring home the victory for Anna as Lauren Ockmoody just didn't quite have enough to track her down in the end, but still should be a very good time for the Bulldog. I'd imagine they're going to drop some time, uh, at least a little bit from their seed time of 421. Anna finishes first with... Columbus Grove second. Looks like Riverdale third, followed by Bodkins in the fourth position. And looks like Lincoln View coming up in five. So I believe that. Oh, excuse me. That would be St. John's. St. John's. Sorry, then Lincoln yep. View. Yellow and blue. All I see is yellow and blue. <laughs> and that, I think, is going to do it and bring the girls 4x4 four four to a close. 
a special thanks to all the underwriting sponsors for tonight's track meet, the Spencerville Athletic Boosters, Charles River, Tabler's drive Through, Macomb Family Dental, Van Crest of Delphus, The Creamery, and Quest Federal Community. Thank you so much for supporting WSN and sponsoring tonight's Columbus Grove Track Invitational. So the final event of the evening, Nate, the boys 4x400. Four it's four members of one team, one lap apiece, getting that baton around the track as fast as they can. Let's take a look at the field tonight. In lane one will be Bodkins, Carson Hooker, Austin Rogers, Colin Dosick, and Keaton Schnipple. In lane two is Anna Blank Bixler, Tristan Platfoot, Jay Muter, and Jaron Nottage. In lane three, Columbus Grove, Trenton Barraza, Trenton Daniels, Leighton Blakenmeyer, and Anden Blakenmeyer. In lane four, Lincolnview, Cohen Cox, Creston Toe, Caleb Denman, and Connor Baldoff. In lane five, Jack Dussault, Luke Donaldson, Nick Tackett, and Daniel Donaldson. Donaldson. And in lane six, Ada with Julian Grouse, Mason Slevover, Caleb Hickman, and Jackson Brown running anchor for the Bulldogs. The meet record was set in 2015 by the team from Anna at 3 minutes and 29 seconds, which is really fast, ladies and gentlemen. Are really you sure fast. they didn't stop it after three legs? <laughs> that's that's, that's all four of them? Like, that's all, all four. right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's fast. <laughs> oh, shoot. Did you know WSN is a viewer-supported nonprofit ministry? Every spring, we launch a spring funding campaign. Would you make a donation? Our goal is $50,000. Donate online at WTLW.com slash donate or call 419-339-4444. The Spring Life funding campaign continues through Mother's Day. So what a great night we had tonight and uh, saw some great performances, Nate. Uh, the one that comes to mind is Alex Kesson from Delphi St. John. She had a terrific night tonight as she wins the 100, the 200, and the long jump. Yeah, she had a tremendous night. We saw her put on some pretty impressive performances tonight. And, and honestly, you know, her victories, they, they weren't close. I mean, <laughs> right. she, she was able to run away with, with all of them, um, had a three-inch uh, win in long jump. 200 was a dominating oh, victory. That was, that was amazing. And then in that 100, was able to, to um, hold off a charging Liv Lindemann and come away with that victory. Yeah, so she did a terrific job for her team. And, the, and really, the girls from Delphi St. John's had, had a great night tonight, and they were battling back and forth with Jefferson, uh, Crosstown Rivals, for fourth and fifth place there for yeah. the longest time. Both, both of those, you look at Liv Lindemann from Delphi Jefferson, who had a great night. They are off. Looks like a pretty clean start. Columbus Grove in the middle of the track doing a nice job of trying to erase that stagger right away before they even hit the 100-meter mark. So here they come down the back stretch. You see the glow from those batons out there in the dark skies. Grove is off to a tremendous start. And here at the top seed time at 3.38. Lincoln View with that 3.29, but Columbus Grove has just gone out and just taken this lead. They have erased the stagger against all other teams, and this is a tremendous lead leg coming from Trenton Burroughs. He is just dominating right now. The All-State tailback. You see why he totes the rock in the fall, and he carries the stick in the springtime. Open handoff exchange here in the 4x4, four four, and that one gets off clean. Lincoln View comes in second. So Grove has a nice big lead here in the boys' 4x400. Danny Holbrook, Nate Garlock from Columbus Grove High School, proud to bring you tonight's Columbus Grove Bulldog Invitational. A fantastic night of track and field. We hope you've enjoyed watching tonight as we will be broadcasting all spring long. Lots of events for you on the track and field, on the baseball and softball diamonds. Looks like uh, Leighton Blankenmeyer has been able to open that lead a little bit. Over Lincoln View and Riverdale. He's got that head down. He's trying to kick, charge, and wants the legs to keep going. But here comes Riverdale. <laughs> Lincoln View pushing as well. And, and nice job that time by Blankenmeyer. Not letting himself fall through, pushing through it. And he got that lead back open. As this third leg could go a long way in deciding this one for the Columbus Grove. Lankenmeyer did a great job of keeping that lead and really extending it there at the end of that race. What a terrific job by that young man. And that... That exchange that time coming in with Riverdale and Lincoln View at the same time forced Lincoln View out. They had to run in lane three there for quite a while, which now that the stagger is yeah. gone, you had to run farther, and that's why you see that lead expand the way that it did from uh, Lincoln View and Riverdale. So here comes Columbus Grove. This is runner number three as they come around the last curve here heading towards the home stretch. 
Trenton Daniels trying to hold on to this lead. Wants to hold off the hard charging uh, Riverdale runner, Nick Tackett. As Tackett is trying to reel him in best that he can. But a tremendous job by Daniels. As every time it looks coming around <laughs> that third curve, like maybe they're going to get close. That last 100 meters belongs to the Bulldogs. So Columbus Grove continues to lead on the final lap of the final race of the night. The boys 4 by 400 And Grove trying to extend that lead. And we do not have updated scores yet, which are efforting to get those for you. Daniel Donaldson from Riverdale. He's just trying to get himself in position here, trying to get up there. He's closed a little bit of that lead there. He's, he's coming on hard. We're going to see how much strength he's got on this last uh, curve here. Blankenmeyer, though, with those long legs. <laughs> you know, as, if he holds form to the rest of those runners, as soon as he comes up and straightens out here, we're going to see him push. And there it is. Right on cue. <laughs> Blankenmeyer pushing through. As Tackett's not going to have enough track, and Columbus Grove's going to take home the victory. A nice win for the Grove Bulldogs and the boys, 4x400. Riverdale comes in second, followed by Lincoln View in third position, followed by Anna Bodkins and Ada bringing up the rear. A great night of track and field here from Columbus Grove. Nate, sum it up for us in, in a few words about the uh, the kids tonight and the teams and, and a great effort by everybody. Yeah, it's kind of about the halfway point of, of the track season. We're midway through March. We're past Easter at this point. Weather's starting to turn on us, have uh, some better weather. We're seeing the times drop. We saw that tonight. Saw some meet records fall as well. Some great performances and just looking forward as we continue this March through April into May and looking forward to all, all the great times and performances that I know that we'll see as we move forward. And that'll wrap it up from Columbus Grove High School. The Columbus Grove Bulldog Invitational for Nate Garlock, Megan Sherrick, Cassidy Driscoll, and myself and our entire WSN crew saying God bless and we'll see you next time. <laughs>